Now let's move on to the generalized device generalized device geometry, which is sketched here um, in C. So here we have a device in which we inject a current in contact one, ground this contact, which has the index m plus two. Now between these two contacts, there are a total of m contacts along the upper edge of the device and n contacts along the lower edge of the device. So in total we have n plus m plus one plus one contacts or m plus n plus two contacts in total. So again, if we apply the multi-terminal landau bittiger formalism, we have current and voltage vectors of dimensions m plus n plus two times one, and we have the transmission matrix, which is a square matrix of dimensions m plus n plus two by m plus n plus two. Now, since we are injecting into contact one, we can set the first entry of the current vector to be the current i, as well as the m plus second entry to be minus i, since it's contact m plus two, the contact with the index m plus two, which is grounded. And it is here that the injected current leaves the device. All the other entries of the current vector are zero since we assume that all these other contacts, so the M contacts along the upper edge and the N contacts along the lower edge, are left floating or are connected to voltmeters with very high internal input impedances. For the vector of the voltages, we call the first entry V, so that will be the voltage here on this um, contact with respect to ground. Um, and also we set the, the m plus second entry of the voltage vector that corresponds to this voltage here to zero since we say that it's, this contact is grounded. All the other um, voltages, so the voltages of the contacts along the upper edge and the voltages of the contacts along the lower edge are unknown and have to be calculated. The transmission matrix has the following form. So it has twos on its diagonal since, again, we assume a perfect ideal ballistic one-dimensional edge channels with no reflection, and there are two of them injected um, at each contact into the system. And the terms which are next to the, so which are then uh, closest to the diagonal terms, so here, for example, th this one and this one, so the the first, um, the, the terms with indices um, below and above the, the, the diagonal for each row, they are equal to one or minus one since the transmission um, from one contact to its two neighboring contacts is always one because there is exactly one edge channel transmitted. So here, for example, if we consider, let's say, um, this um, contact one, then T21, which is this entry here, is one since there is one edge channel going from contact two to one. And similarly, the last entry here, which is T1M plus two plus N, is also one or minus one because there is one edge channel going from this contact, the last contact, into contact one. This is the last contact and this is the first one, so we're counting the contacts or the indices in a clockwise direction. Now, if we um, look at any voltage contact, so any contact along here, the upper or the lower edges, then we know that the current is zero. So if we look at such an entry of the current vector where um, that entry is zero, we can write, if we consider the corresponding row in the transmission matrix and multiply it by the voltage vector, we get an expression, which is true for all voltage contacts, meaning currents, uh, meaning contacts where no net current flows. So for any arbitrary voltage contact I, could be at the upper or at the lower edge, it doesn't matter, we get from 
from this transmission matrix, we get that zero because the net current um, in a voltage contact is zero is given by two times the voltage at that contact minus the two voltages at its neighboring contacts. So V minus VI minus one and minus VI plus one, where the I minus one and the I plus one are the indices of the two contacts which are closest to contact I, so it's two neighboring contacts. And from this, it follows that the voltage VI at any voltage contact is just the average or the mean of the voltages of its two neighboring contacts. Now this um, expression here um, is important because it implies that the voltage along a given edge decreases lin linearly in the number of contacts. So if we assume here that we have a voltage V and here that we have a voltage zero because this contact is grounded, then the voltage along the upper edge decreases linearly in the number of contacts and the same thing is true for the bottom edge. That results from this expression here. So what we can do is we can in effect express the voltage in any arbitrary voltage contact in terms of the voltage V. Since we know that here we start with the voltage V, here we end up with zero and it has to decrease linearly. Therefore, for the upper edge, and the upper edge that corresponds to voltage, voltage contacts with indices uh, ranging from two to M plus one, There we can write the voltage as the voltage at contact one divided by m plus one times m plus two minus i, where i is the index. So m plus one, by the way, is the number of edge segments along the upper edge. So, so here along the upper edge we have m contacts, but the number of segments so this will be a segment, the segment between contacts one and two, their number is m plus one. So that's this m plus one. Along the lower edge, we can do very much the same thing. So for these contacts, these voltage contacts over here, the, 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 the n of those, we can state that the voltage Now let me see if I can let's write it like this. This voltage is given by V divided by N plus 1 times I, the index, minus M minus 2. So um, if you are still a bit suspicious about these two expressions, you can um, convince yourselves uh, or convince yourself that if you, for the upper edge, if you insert, say, here, 2 for i, for the index i, you obtain V2, so the voltage at this voltage contact. Um, and if you insert for the, for the index i3, then you obtain the voltage um, at this contact over here. And that all these voltages, once you calculate all of them, up to the up to this contact which is um, up to the one contact before the this one which is grounded so this one the the one with index m plus one you'll see that all the voltages fulfill this expression over here which we just derived by considering one entry um, or respectively one row of this transmission matrix so again we're we uh, this all stems from the fact that the voltage decreases linearly along a given edge as um, as is uh, derived, or uh, as this expression here shows us. So now let's consider the the first entry of the current vector. So the the i one, which is just which we just call i. So i is equal to, and then we have to take this row here, right? Multiply with the conductance quantum e squared over h, and the whole vector v of the 
um, voltage vector. But since most of the entries of the transmission matrix are zero apart from the three, apart from these three, um, what we get is that I is equal to E squared over H. And then we have two V. Remember V is just V1, the first entry uh, of the voltage vector, minus V2 minus V, and then with the index M plus N plus 2. And now we can insert these two equations, or these two expressions, or we can use them to express V2 and V M plus N plus 2 in terms of the voltage V. Just by plugging in here a 2 for the index i and here a m plus n plus 2 for the index i. So then we obtain that the current is given by e squared over h times v times and now we have m plus 1 plus n minus plus 1 divided by the product m plus 1 and n plus 1. Now note this, that I wrote this in a very suggestive way because we want to further simplify this expression. The way we do that is um, that we write it in the following. So we say that the current is now 1 over h over e squared n plus 1 plus 1 over h over e squared m plus 1 times v. So this here, I have just rewritten this expression um, by breaking up this fraction into two, two terms, um, into a sum of, of two different fractions, and have um, written the e squared over h now in the denominator of the respective fractions. So we obtain something like this. Uh, this expression being completely equivalent to this one. Now you see that here on the left hand side we have a current and on the right hand side we have something multiplied by the voltage. So this something here has the units of conductance. So we, we can identify this expression here with um, with a conductance. Now this conductance is the sum of two terms, so essentially it's a sum of two conductances. So if this is a conductance, and this as well, then its inverse will be a resistance. So what we can write is that we can we can call this expression here in the denominator um, a resistance, and we'll call it for now R lower, and you'll see in a second why. And the same way we can call this our upper. So what we're going to do, we're just going to write the current as 1 over our lower plus 1 over our upper times the voltage. And then we're going to write that as a sum of two currents I lower and I upper, where we had R lower defined as H over E squared times N plus 1, that was this, and where we had R upper equal to H over E squared M plus 1. So let me um, explain what we've done here. So we've written the current as um, um, something multiplied by the voltage, and we said that this something is a conductance, and therefore this is the individual terms which make up this total conductance are also conductances, and therefore their inverses are resistances. And now we call this resistance here are lower because you see it depends it's given by the product of the resistance quantum h over e squared and n plus 1 so it and the n remember 
is the number of contacts along the lower edge. So this resistance only depends on the number of contacts at the lower edge and therefore we can associate this resistance with the lower edge. And similarly we can associate this resistance with the upper edge. Here you see um, that only the number m of contacts along the upper edge determines this resistance. Now if you look and think about these two expressions a bit more, it may occur to you that we have the resistance quantum, say for the lower edge, and we have the resistance quantum but n plus 1 times. But n plus 1 is exactly the number of edge segments along the lower edge. So if we have n contacts, then the number of edge segments between uh, in total along this edge is given by m plus 1. So we can think of this resistance as being the total resistance of the lower edge, which is just given by the number of edge segments along that edge times the resistance quantum. So we can associate the resistance quantum with each edge segment. And we can do the same for the upper edge. And we can therefore write the, the, uh, the current or we can decompose the current into two components, one which flows along the lower edge and one, ch one which flows along the upper edge. And the one which flows along the lower edge is just given by the voltage V divided by the resistance, the total resistance of that of the lower edge and the current which flows along the upper edge is given by the voltage divided by the total resistance of the upper edge. So this means that if we take this now, we have, we can write that V is equal to some total resistance times the current, and this total resistance is just the parallel connection of our lower and our upper. So I hope things will become more clear with this schematic over here. So here you can see um, what we've done is we've rewritten the current uh, which is injected here into this contact as the sum of two currents, one which flows exclusively along the upper edge, that's I upper, and one which flows exclusively along the lower edge, that's I lower. And we've seen that we can think of each edge segment between two contacts, say between contacts 1 and 2, as a resistor of resistance H over E squared. Therefore, the total resistance of, say, the upper edge is just given by the number of edge segments along that edge times the resistance quantum. So that's here our upper. And the same is true for the lower edge, that's then our lower. So the total resistance is then just a parallel connection of our lower and our upper, right? That's what we've written here, since we have here between the first and the uh, last, or the, the contact, uh, so the between the contacts with indices 1 and n plus 2, we have the voltage V, we have the current I, and the total resistance is just a parallel connection of the upper and lower edges, which just gives us the total resistance. So you see that um, we've actually managed to derive a great simplification, um, because from now on we don't actually need, if we want to understand an arbitrary um, device geometry of a 2D topological uh, system, we don't really need the transmission matrix anymore because we, we've we just seen that we can we can always think of an edge segment between two contacts, say, I don't know, this edge segment is just being a normal resistor of resistance H over E squared. And if we do that, then we'll arrive at exactly the same results that, we'll, that we'd arrive to um, if we'd use um, the lander particular formalism, I mean if we use the transmission matrix and just solved for all the voltages. So let's say we want to um, look at problem D. So 
So in problem D, um, we have the situation that we inject the current and we have a six terminal device, first of all, and we inject the current at contact one, um, where contact two is grounded. And what we want to calculate now is um, R one, two, four, three. So that would be by definition, that is this voltage difference V4 minus V3 divided by the injected current. So the current flows from here, is injected here and leaves the device here. And what we want to know is this resistance. So the voltage difference between contacts three and four divided by this injected current. And now we could do exactly the same kind of thing that we did before and just write down the transmission matrix and solve the system of equations and so on and we would get the result, or we can just use an equivalent resistor network model. So you see here, we've replaced each edge segment with a resistor of resistance H over E squared. And now we can um, easily arrive to the solution. So first of all, we see that, again, we can decompose the current here into two parts. Now, since this voltage is V between contacts one and two, then this current is just V divided by H over E squared. So I upper is just V divided by H over V divided by H over E squared. And I lower is V divided by five H over E squared, because here we have one, two, three, four, five, uh, edge segments, uh, each having a resistance of h over e squared along this edge. So this current is just given by this voltage difference divided by the total resistance of this edge, and that's 5 h over e squared. So now we can write the total current as the sum of the upper and lower currents, and that just gives us 6 v divided by 5 h over e squared. So from this it follows that the resistance we're interested in so that, that resistance being the voltage difference between these two contacts over the current um, that is just given by h over 6e squared, where we came to this result by inserting the current here and noting that v4 minus v3, so this voltage difference, if you look here, this voltage difference is just one-fifth of this voltage v, since we have one, two, three, four, five um, equal resistors in total in a series connection, going from this point, which has voltage V, to this point, which has voltage zero here in anti-clockwise um, direction along this lower edge. So to we rem just write here as a remark that V4 minus V3 is just one-fifth of the <laughs> voltage V. So you see here, we were able to derive the resistance we're interested in very quickly by using this um, equivalent resistor network model without actually having to deal with the transmission matrix and so on, just by associating a resistance of um, h over e squared with each edge segment.